In this work, we're going to talk about our learnings from uh, playing with different uh, neo-symbolic AI architecture designs and uh, defining characteristics that we think neo-symbolic AI uh, system should have. We are calling these characteristics neo-symbolic bench. Um, okay. Uh, for a uh, simple uh, motivating example, um, consider data samples from the function uh, y is equal to x squared. So 1 uh, squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, and so on. Can we uh, use a neural network to approximate the value of x squared for x equal to 7? So since 7 was not seen as part of the data, there are no guarantees on if the neural network will be able to do this because this is known as an out of distribution case. On the other hand, if we had the true symbolic ground truth, which is the symbolic description of the function, we can exactly reason about all cases and we don't have to worry about out of distribution examples. Therefore, translating from inputs to symbols that the ground truth symbolic function is composed of is a beneficial thing to do. However, it is a really hard class of problem in computer science, the hardest, in fact. Uh, so we are investigating how far can neural networks uh, achieve translation from data level inputs to symbols for further processing using symbolic reasoning methods. In this project, we propose a complexity or abstraction hierarchy in neurosymbolic AI that is comprised of four layers or levels. The first layer is responsible for machine translation and verification. It translates from input data to syntactic outputs in the form of language like English to French translation. The second layer is responsible for purely functional or zero add to program generation. It translates input data into purely functional abstractions, for example, instructions for a particular program. The third layer is responsible for single additive functional program generation, where it translates input data to single additive functional abstractions, for example, knowledge graph properties. The final layer is responsible for dual additive functional program generation. It does the translation from input data to dual additive functional abstractions, for example, knowledge graph triples. Firstly, we elaborate on the simplest case, which is machine translation from a source language to a target language. In this case, we experimented by trying out English to Shakespeare English translation. In the given figure, we propose the architecture of this layer, which includes three main components, neural module, symbol mapper, and the symbolic reasoner or executor. We follow the same component breakdown in the next three layers as well. The input to the system would be an English question, and then it would go to the neural module, producing intermediate inputs. These intermediate inputs would be trans transferred to the symbol mapper, which then outputs a symbolic representation. The, this representation would go to the symbolic reasoner or executor, who reasons on the produced symbols and generates the answers to the questions. The reason why this first layer has the lowest level of complexity is that this is a pure syntactic procedure where the neural module needs to memorize syntactic grammar rules from one language to another. All these neurosymbolic architectures are feedback loops that continue cyclic processes. Next, we move to the next level of the hierarchy, which is moving from syntactic translation to translating from English syntax to functional abstractions. This is purely functional or zero additive program generation. Here, all the objects in this particular scene are interchangeable. So, in the program, which is a result of the translation, the objects can be safely ignored. Only the functions that operate on the objects need to be specified. For example, the function cube returns all the objects that are of the shape cube and it does not require any arguments since it is assumed that the arguments are a list of ob all objects in the scene. Similarly, 
The color is a functional abstraction that returns all colors of all cube shaped objects because it appears after the cube. Once again, we don't need to explicitly specify the arguments since they are implicitly defined in the function abstractions. Now we move on to the third uh, level in the complexity hierarchy. Uh, so, which is moving from zero-arity functions to singularity functions. What we mean by that is, like in zero, the zero-arity case where the functions did not require arguments, in this um, at this level, the functions do require specification of the arguments. For example, in the cooking domain, when you need to marinate something, you cannot marinate vegetables, for example. You need to specify sensible things to marinate. Uh, here we experiment with a neurosymbolic system similar uh, to the previous slides. And the components uh, are the same. And we see that the neural uh, network can generate intermediate representation that can be mapped to singularity functional descriptions that the symbolic reasoner can reason with. For the last level in the complexity hierarchy, we test if the neural network can generate not only uh, single argument functions, but uh, dual argument functions similar to triples in a knowledge graph along with typing information. So if we are able to do this, then we can uh, comprehensively build neurosymbolic architectures. Uh, we, in our experiments, we find that neural networks are able to uh, generate um, dualarity functional mappings, uh, which um, knowledge graph reasoner or a similar symbolic reasoner can use to verify the outputs of. Since the neural module today consumes a considerable amount of computing resources, for example, GPU memory, numbers of epochs to train, numbers of parameters to fit, we investigate different architectures to compare their efficiencies. First, a two-layer feedforward network. Second, a polynomial function approximator. Third, a multi-headed attention-based neural network. We test our neural network architectures for their ability to accomplish two broad categories of tasks. First, style transfer, such as write like Shakespeare or generate code. Second, knowledge memorization, such as answer questions from Wikipedia text excerpts. We use the relevant data sets as can be seen in the slide. We found that the polynomial approximation performs most efficiently, followed by the multi-headed attention-based neural network, followed by the two-layer feedforward network. Our findings indicate that it is worth exploring different architectures for the next generation of neural symbolic AI systems. So, so the outcomes of our investigations this semester has been one GPT uh, model that was trained on a large amount of data from different sources uh, relating to uh, data sets for style transfer as well as knowledge memorization. Um, the second outcome was um, a program to generate uh, purely functional abstractions, which was the uh, second level of complexity um, from English language descriptions. The third outcome was uh, to generate um, singularity functional abstractions, which was the third level of complexity from English language descriptions. Uh, this software and the methods used has been submitted to a conference. Um, lastly, um, we are trying to compile all of these um, learnings into a single paper to submit as a consolidated neurosymbolic benchmark paper. Though uh, further investigation is still pending, the current characteristics that we have identified so far that need to be considered in your symbolic AI method benchmarks is efficiency, particularly GPU usage, um, number of parameters and epochs for training of the neural modules, um, and the neural modules ability to support increasing levels of symbolic mapping complexity. 
In this uh, work done in the semester so far, we always experimented with supervised training objectives and cross entropy loss, for example. Future work will involve experimenting with uh, newer training regimes inspired by success of uh, alternative training methods using reinforcement learning, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback. But uh, the future work of uh, training methods might be entirely something different. So furthermore, it will include different kinds of data. We have tested only with text data, such as multimodal data and time series data, and uh, test mappings to not just um, symbolic structures of the static kind, but also that evolve temporarily.